Uh, hi there. My name is Dennis, and I'm a front-end developer in JetBrains. Uh, during this session, I would like to share some updates regarding the plugin development in TeamCity. I will divide my speech in two parts. The first one, the plugin ecosystem overview, and the second one, the code overview. Let me emphasize, most of the updates I will share next relate to the UI part of plugins. That means JavaScript, TypeScript. Of course, I will slightly touch the backend development part, but uh, I believe we already have an amazing documentation for plugin development on the backend. And of course, if you will have any questions, feel free to uh, ask uh, us using the chat. So, plugins are essential part of Team City since its birthday. Uh, during the almost 15 years, developers wrote plugins for different purposes, starting from the simple build notificator, uh, as on your screen, hello Chuck Norris, to the integrations with AWS, Docker Hub, etc. As a result, after 15 years, uh, we have 399 public plugins you can find in the repository. But there is a nuance. Only three of them are marked as UI plugins. On the other hand, we often see that many users write their own plugins for the UI, but do not publish them in the plugin repository. So as a result, we decided that it's, it is a good time to make development life, a developer's life easier. And so we started to refurbish uh, our UI plugin development uh, approaches. So we found some issues. First, first of all, the documentation. We didn't cover user interface integrations in a good manner. For the entire plugin development documentation, we have only one separate page for web UI extensions. Second, we didn't provide API for the UI integrations. Therefore, plugins appealed to the DOM hierarchy. Developers had no useful utilities to visualize their plugins as TeamCity does. As a result, a bunch of plugins which look look and act not in the way TeamCity does. And in the worst case, some plugins could lead you to memory leaks and performance issues. And uh, as we mentioned uh, a few times today, uh, two years ago, we have presented, uh, we have introduced uh, the Sakura UI. Uh, it's a single page application. Uh, it's a application. It is application built on top of the React and Redux. And uh, that means that uh, the uh, scheme we used before, uh, that means a request, page integration, response, became a part of the past. Nowadays, the application is built on top of a REST client architecture. Starting the 2020.2, we provide a new API to integrate UI plugins in both Sakura and the classic UI. Despite the fact I will mostly talk about the React plugins are framework agnostics, so you can use plain JavaScript as well as Angular, Vue, and other libraries. As you can see on your screens right now, there is a static analyzer plugin made with, uh, made by our teammates, uh, not from the Team City team, but uh, separate team. And this is a good, I think this is an excellent uh, example of integration, third-party library, th third-party plugin into the main and Sak Sakura UI. So first of all, we will provide a new JavaScript API. You can declaratively Add a plugin to UI. Second, we provide some development tools. Uh, for example, as you can see here, if you will load your UI using the plugin development mode, you will see place IDs. Uh, on your screenshots, there were uh, some place IDs. I will get that to, to them uh, a little bit later. Apart from that, we will also provide some plenty, plenty useful logs. For example, on your screen right now, you can see that uh, there are life cycles, and this is uh, also one new uh, big addition to the plugin development. Uh, we added life cycles and plugin UI context to the plugins, and it will help you to uh, follow the current plugin state. We also prepared TypeScript and flow typings. I know this screen could be uh, could be look over complicated, but this is how definitions look. And uh, uh, I just wanted to make sure that we have prepared typings and those typings will be hooked up with your IDE, uh, IntelliJ IDEA, WebStorm, or other any smart IDEs. So 
And also by releasing the new plugin approaches, we uh, try to make it easier to use modern JavaScript. Uh, on your screens, you can see right now that, uh, that we can use imports, const, uh, async, await operations, arrow functions. About, uh, about the applicability, there are some ideas for plugins. Some of them we work on right now. Some of them may, may encourage you to write something new. As I mentioned before, there is a static code analysis. Uh, my colleagues before mentioned uh, integrations with Bitbucket or GitLab, for example. You can write any dashboard, any integration with ana analytics. For example, you've built your application and pinned it. And starting the deploy, you will send the analytics data using the build number. From now on, you can make and fetch to the analytics service and download the data regarding the build. How many users downloaded the build? How much countries you affected? How good the conversion and other metrics? How many JavaScript or null pointer exceptions appeared in this build? Of course, it's also applicable to integration with marketing, sales, support uh, systems. For example, you can just list uh, Zendesk tickets on your build or uh, reports average amount of uh, tickets. Social networking, it's 2020. Maybe you would like to share your uh, builds uh, or your build artifacts with the community. And uh, I would like to mention that Sakura UI itself is a plugin. It's really a Java controlled plugin. And uh, you know, the only goal of this plugin is to put the JavaScript bundle, which generates a new page. Actually, uh, writing plugins uh, was possible before in classic UI. Uh, what's different now? Uh, we made it easier and possible uh, possible to use it and to write plugins in declarative way. The last benefit is that you are not required to write much Java code. Of course, you can. If your plugin depends on the internal Team City data, the model stays the same as it was before. We have prepared a boilerplate to start the plugin development. The only goal of this Java code is to register your plugin in a TeamCity core and download JavaScript files. If you are encouraged to uh, give it a try, I recommend you to start from a TeamCity plugin development documentation. Uh, you can scan the QR code or follow the link. And uh, on this front uh, documentation, you can see uh, some useful information. I will scroll my, I will switch my screen to the documentation and show you some stuff. So, uh, first of all, the documentation explains some new terms. Uh, for example, we introduced uh, uh, terms like basic, controlled, and spy UI plugins. We also introduced lifecycle hooks and plugin UI context. The documentation will help you to understand how it works. And there is also a demo plugin repository when, where you can download the uh, pl plugin examples and give it a try. Uh, in the remaining time, I will dive deeper into the code. I will show you the simplest plugin, which is based on the REST communication with two sources of data, TeamCity itself and the JetBrains space. Uh, we, uh, we mentioned before about the space. It's our uh, new product. It's a uh, integrated team environment. It has many cool features, but the main, cool, main feature we are interested in is a team directory. It is a database of employees. So this is my interface. This is my local host, and it's, uh, it's not empty, of course. And here you can see that there is a plugin uh, which uh, does, this, uh, does the next thing. As you can see, there is a committer in this file, uh, in this build. Uh, it's me. And for some reasons, I would like to get the information about this committer. For example, get, uh, I would like to get, uh, get the phone number. And maybe I would like to have a rise a concern button uh, to call some uh, colleagues to review the code or to call uh, the colleagues uh, to <clears throat> double check something. So, um, how it works. 
First of all, I request the data from the backend of uh, Team City. I will show you how to do. And then, uh, based on the user email of this committer, I will request a JetBrains space to uh, please give me all the data about this email. Uh, let me go to the code. Uh, yeah, this is the code. <clears throat> Uh, this is a demo repository. As you can see, there it's written demo plugin server, uh, for example. Uh, there are two main vital parts of plugin, demo plugin server itself and the front end part. Let me start from the demo plugin server. It is just a simple controller, Java controller, which re registers your plugin into the team city. I'm opening it. So, uh, what does a controller do? First of all, uh, the main goal of this uh, controller is to register your plugin, and then uh, every time Team City uh, renders a page, it calls a method called uh, do handle. And in this method, we call the GSP file. Let me collapse it a little. Yeah. Uh, we call a GSP file, React, GSP, React plugin GSP. And uh, we fill this uh, GSP file with a model. If you are familiar with plugin development uh, we introduced many years ago, uh, it, it should look uh, the same as it was before, uh, except one, one thing, bundle dev URL. This string constant contains a link to a local webpack server. This is a feature that helps you to update your JavaScript plugin incrementally and in live mode without uh, rebuild your plugin. Keep in mind that in this file, we also added this URL to the content security policy, uh, uh, exclude list. And by doing so, we let the team city know that all the requests to the URL uh, on the bundle that URL, in our case, it is a localhost 8080, so all the requests to this URL should not be blocked. Um, how does it work? As I mentioned before, every time Team City renders a page, it requests a plugin and calls the method do handle. In the do handle, we request a React plugin GSP. Let me go to the React plugin GSP. This is a file. And it's just the simplest file you can you can ever imagine. Uh, it contains if else, uh, if bundle dev URL is specified, then we'll load the GS file from the uh, local host. Actually, that's pretty much it. In ideal cases, you will not be required to add something to this Java code. Otherwise, we already have an amazing documentation for the backend parts of the plugin development. Uh, of course, uh, there are some plugins that, uh, which should require some internal data of uh, Team City. For example, resolving build IDs, build names, or resolving project IDs, uh, gets agents data. Everything you could do using uh, the same way uh, as described in documentation. And we also covered those cases in the front end documentation in section controlled plugin. So, this is a Java part of a plugin, and let's close it. The second part, the second vital part of our plugin is a front end. As you can see, front end part is a modern, uh, modern application. Uh, it is a React app written with the TypeScript, as you can see here, uh, TypeScript file and T6 file. It is a React uh, for, uh, file extension. We do not insist on using the React nor TypeScript. As I mentioned before, you can use any framework, any language you prefer, even the Kotlin JS. Have you ever have you heard about it? Uh, we, we, we gave it a chance and it works and it works good. But right now we have prepared typings only for TypeScript and Flow and prepared some universal utilities. Uh, I will go to them a little bit later. Uh, as long as this is a node application, Node.js application, you have to download node modules. Uh, we are aware that uh, not everyone uh, knows how Node.js works and no, not everyone has Node.js installed on his environment. So we prepare a Docker Compose file. Let me show it. 
this this is a simple file and uh, using the docker container you can build your uh, plugin in isolation without needing to install any uh, java maven or no node.js uh, tools so uh, in preparing to this speech i have already launched the terminal and launched the docker compose uh, it took a while um, what uh, did i do Docker Compose run service ports there, and using the, this command, I launched it. I have launched the Webpack server on 8080 port, and from this time, every time our plugin will, our GSP file will request a bundle JS. It will be requested from the local host, uh, local Webpack uh, instance. Webpack instance uh, has two goals. The first one is to host your files. If you will open your uh, web browser and type uh, localhost uh, 8080, you will see that there, there is a bundle JS. And the second goal of the webpack is to incrementally recompile your, um, your plugin. I'm going back to the TeamCity UI to show how it works. So as you can see, there are a few builds. Uh, the second build. In the second build, there are no committers. There are no changes, uh, hence there are no committers, but we still show the developers committed in this build header. It looks excess, redundant, and uh, we have to re remove it. And to do so, I'm going back to my code, to my application, and just add the condition. I have prepared before, but uh, what, what it, what it does, uh, it just checks if the user list is not empty and if it's empty, it returns now. So my next move is to just save the application and it will be recompiled. Let me scroll down. Yeah, compiled successfully. And I just refresh my page and as you can see, there are no changes and uh, there is no uh, header. But if we will open it on the build with changes, here we are. Um, what's next? Um, let me close the terminal. Uh, the entry point for the plugin is index.ts file. Every time the plugin system loads the bundle.js, it launches this, this file. And in this file, I want to show you two key features of the new plugin ecosystem. First of all, we import, uh, we import modules from JetBrains TeamCity API and uh, we import files. That means that uh, from now on, you can write your UI plugins using the modern JavaScript. And the second key feature is a plugin constructor. I have selected it. Oops, yeah. Uh, what is the plugin constructor? Uh, it is a simple function which receives two arguments. Uh, simply saying it's, uh, it is uh, where to put the plugin here, and the second, what the plugin is. Let me start from where to put. You can use get parameter called plugin development mode. Uh, I'm going back to the interface, and here I can specify the parameter. Everything is described in the plugin documentation. Uh, so uh, feel free to get there. So if I open interface with plugin development pods, it appeared some place ID, some containers. Each of these containers uh, has its own name, and those names are unique. And you can just select the place ID name, copy it, and paste it to the to your uh, constructor. That's how plugin ecosystem decides where to render your plugin. We have prepared place IDs for both the Sakura UI. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are place IDs in the header, in sidebar, and we also prepared some plugin, plugin containers for old UI. Let me show it. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, we try to keep the old UI as it was before. So uh, all the plugins written before 20.2 20, 20 will work as they were working. If you update them to, and uh, there is a, uh, not a complicated way to update them to be useful in Sakura UI. So I close the old, uh, I close the classic UI and go back to the new UI. Uh, that's how plugin containers work. Uh, what next? Um, as I mentioned before, we have prepared some typings, and if you would like to put your place ID somewhere else, you can just. Uh, get a list of all possible uh, place IDs and select whatever you want to use. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of place IDs we have prepared, but uh, we are open to receive any feedback to add any new place IDs. So the second part, um, what the plugin is. Uh, this is the second argument and it receives more options. The name. name, Plugin name is used as an unique ID of plugin. Along with the place ID, name makes a uh, uh, unique key, key, value, key value pair in the plugin registry. Plugin registry is a store for, the, for plugins. In most cases, you will not work with this registry directly, but sometimes it will help you to get to the instance of a plugin. See more in section control plugins and documentations. Content. Content is uh, one more option. Content is a vital part of your plugin. Without content, uh, the plugin doesn't make any sense. So it could be a React component, as in our case, because we love React. Uh, it could be HTML node and it could be stream. Uh, for example, let me show you. I just write. Uh, it should be hello world, of course. Um, as usual, I press uh, common test and then update the UI. Hope it will work from scratch. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. One moment. Ah, yeah. Uh, hello world. Uh, why, uh, why it appeared here? As you can see, this plugin is registered for the Sakura build before content. And uh, previously, I, I showed, showed you Sakura build line expanded uh, content. So anyway, content could be uh, DOM nodes, it could be string, and it could be the React uh, element. Uh, let me get back. Uh, and options. We have prepared uh, some options. Uh, it could be useful for you. Uh, for example, debug. Uh, using debug option, you can make the plugin report uh, useful data about the current state of a, pl a plugin. For example, uh, what's the current context of the plugin? Uh, what is the uh, place of this plugin? Let me show it in, in the code. I just opened the console. And here we are. It is a set of useful data. As you can see, uh, there are some uh, lifecycle events called on mount, on unmount. Uh, there are also on context updates. All those life cycles are described in documentation. Uh, and here we can just uh, have a quick look uh, what is the current con context is. Uh, next. Uh, I think uh, it's it is it's it uh, that's it about the plugin uh, plugin constructor uh, and the last part uh, the content itself. Uh, I'm going to FGS T6 this file FGS and I will not get deep into how React works. I do understand that uh, not everybody likes uh, React, but uh, the first thing. Whenever the, our plugin is rendered, we make a request to the uh, REST API, uh, Team City REST API. For this, we use our await utils request JSON. Let me wrap the text. Yep. Utils request JSON. Here we request all the changes data, including the user data, email, ID, and, uh, and name. 
Uh, I highlight that request JSON is a utility predefined in JetBrains SimCity API. So uh, its goal is, it handles all the authentication headers. So the only matter you have to worry about is what to receive from the backend. Not how, know how to authorize, but what you want to receive. Uh, the next important thing about React uh, plugins. Uh, when we start the request, we set loading is true. That means uh, whenever, uh, while we are requesting the data, we shouldn't show any useful da uh, any data except the loader. And while interface is still loading, we write, uh, if loading, return loader inline. What's the magic? Uh, what's the magic here? Loader inline. Let me show you at the top of the page. Loader inline is a component. It is a small brick, uh, and the entire Sakura UI is built on top of small bricks uh, called uh, Ring UI. It is our internal UI library. You can import any component from uh, Ring UI as well as from other React uh, libraries, uh, and that's how you can make your plugin look and act behave like TeamCity does. Uh, for example, uh, as our static analysis team did. So, uh, what happens next? Uh, when we finish loading the data using the request JSON, we just simply deduplicate the user emails, uh, user emails because there could be possibly uh, one committer who committed to uh, uh, who committed uh, two or more commits, uh, and we have to deduplicate it. And then, uh, if application not is loading and the user list is not empty, we are going to the next brick of our plugin, user profile. And I'm going to user profile. Here, uh, the last part of the plugin where we make a request to the third party service. In our case, it is a JetBrains space, but feel free to use any other services you would like to. Let me get into the request user info. Uh, as you can see, this is just a request to space URL and some endpoint. Um, so what happens if, uh, finally, when we load all the data, we simply render the React component uh, and render the profile name, first name, last name, and uh, of course, masked phone number. So that was a short overview about the React plugins. Uh, let me point and highlight one more time that it's uh, it will work not only with React uh, plugins, uh, React components, but uh, with any JavaScript framework. And uh, um, I think uh, it's pretty much it. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions. And if you would like to start the plugin development, uh, I recommend you to go to the documentation and see how it works. Uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Great. Thanks, Tadness. That was uh, really helpful. So. Um, you know, just to reiterate, if you guys are interested in developing UI plugins, um, it's definitely an area we haven't seen a ton of action on over the last few years, uh, but we wanted to make the resources available uh, and easier for to use. So um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, Dennis, one question I have for you. Um, mm -hmm. When we're talking about the new secure UI in these front end plugins, can you talk a little bit about the backwards compatibility between uh, plugins you might be developing for the secure UI and how that's going to mm -hmm. relate to the classic UI? So, uh, first of all, uh, all the plugins written before the 2020.2 will work the same. And uh, you can write, uh, you can use previously written plugin in every version, uh, including the 2020.2. If you would like to integrate your plugin into the LTUI, uh, there possibly uh, will be some workarounds. Uh, because we have no place ID in previous versions of Team City, uh, for example, in 2019. And uh, that means somewhere in your code will be just uh, if else. Uh, that means uh, uh, you have to check what's the current uh, version 
uh, we have a predefined its utilities to get the current Team City build number, for example, or major version. And based on this data, you can render one GSP or render the modern JavaScript file. Okay, great. Um, and then if folks want to develop plugins, whether they're UI plugins uh, or uh, just regular plugins for Team City, can they submit those to the plugin marketplace? What, what's the process for that look like? Uh, so uh, we haven't uh, yet uh, described this way uh, in documentation. So I think I have to uh, write this because uh, right now I cannot answer this. Maybe some of colleagues can help me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, so I, I can talk a little bit generally to the process. Uh, if you're interested in submitting a plugin to our marketplace uh, that you've developed for either an integration you're using um, or something open source, uh, reach out to our support team and we'll help route that in the right direction so we can uh, get it hosted on the uh, JetBrains marketplace. Um, all right. I uh, appreciate uh, your time, Dennis. Uh, this was a really helpful talk. Uh, hopefully we'll see uh, more plugins in our marketplace uh, here shortly. Thank you.